Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk back again with you guys for another show for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series. But the first in a new series of the show called the Tactical Breakdown Report. Every single month we're going to be giving you guys plenty of updates on our loan players. And not only that, but also with the help of a fantastic guest, our youth team as well. For our first show, I thought it'd be a good idea to have a live chat and answer some of your questions maybe in the chat box as well. But specifically to go through all about Arsenal's youth mostly around their under-23 squad. And to do that, I am very happy to be joined by uh, a partner of the channel for this year as well. It's Kev, a.k.a. Next Generation Arsenal, that you probably do follow because most of you are following him at Scouting out Indoors. It's indoors, In, isn't it? Indoors, yeah. <laughs> scouting Indoors. How are you doing, Kev? Are you well? I'm all right. I'm well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me on. Um, sorry if I look a little bit dishevelled. I've just come from playing football. So I'm slightly knackered from that, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to be playing football with the times that we've been facing. Is uh, how how long have you been playing since uh, you've been allowed to go back? Yeah, since since they opened a couple of months now, since they opened up the restrictions again, and it's it's good. It's outdoor. It's good to be out doing it, even if yeah. I feel like I'm dying five minutes in. It's still yeah. good to be out. Yeah, I know that feeling well. I know I know it very well. Um, so, Kev, okay, before we kind of get into everything, do you want to just kind of introduce yourself a bit to the listeners, tell people who you are based upon, obviously, your social media account? Because this is kind of a first for you, doing kind of an online live stream type of thing. So give people some background into your interests around Arsenal U3. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't do this too often for a variety of reasons, but uh, I guess who I am is just, is just someone that's always had a, an interest in uh in in Arsenal youth I don't I don't claim to be an expert or anything like that it's just something I've always been enthusiastic about um I think it it stems back from the days of Cesc Fabregas coming through and and kind of wanting to know a little bit more about that and then you dig a little deeper a few years later and you, and you find gems like Jack Wilshire and I think uh I went to an Arsenal game years ago I forgot what year it was now but we we beat Sheffield United 6-0 um, it was Jack Wilshere's debut, and uh, I think Aaron Ramsey won of his first or second game, something like that. And they were just they were just incredible. I think Carlos Velas got a hat trick, and <laughs> all these players that were kind of in and around the youth team. And I was like, wow, who are these people? I want to know more. And it, it kind of just stemmed from that. And I've I've been paying as much as attention as I can to it ever since. Uh, so I guess yeah, I'm someone that's most most known for. Uh, kind of uh, looking at the next generation of Arsenal players, really. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, obviously, we've, we've had conversation before and you've helped contribute as well over at 101 Great Goals and some of the articles we've done there. When we're looking at players like Miguel Aziz, Joe Lopez, following Balogun, and, and you've helped out a few of those articles fantastically. And I didn't really have a, a long think when I was thinking about who to contact regarding doing a show every month on the updates of, of Arsenal's youth team. And the idea of the show today is to kind of go through some of the, some of the specific players in the team, some that are going to be making a step up to the first team this year, like Balogun and, and maybe be as ease this year as well but to kick off just give us kind of the listeners an overview of what happened last year because it wasn't the best in terms of kind of the the results on the pitch and obviously ended with Steve Bold losing his job as well so how was the season watching it and do you think the right decision was made by the club in the end well it was a really strange old season wasn't it it was uh, I think I think it it took us seven or eight games to find a win and we were you know every week thinking is this going to be the week that we that we pull a win out the bag with the players we have on the pitch we really should be doing that but it, it just wasn't working every week mm. um and then it kind of turned around and bold kind of i think we had a big win against blackburn where we beat them uh six nil i think and uh it, it turned around and we i think we went nine games unbeaten at that point and we thought right you know things have turned around the corner has been turned um, but then I think uh, a couple of big defeats against big clubs, against United and against Liverpool, and we were sort of back to square one, whether you could see the confidence had just gone in the players. Um, there was, I think, the, the back four, sometimes back three, looked very unsettled. And we were we were shipping goals for fun. Um, and it, we just, from that point on, were, were fighting every week just to scrape a draw at times. And we were we were looking pretty desperate. So I think it, in the end, bold leaving was was the right result. And when you look at the way the senior team are trying to play football and what what Mikel is trying to implement, and okay, some people might 
disagree with what I say there, but when you look at what he's trying to do, it's hard to see that translate into what the under-23s were doing as well. It was hard to see much symmetry in what was going on there. And I think that's always something that a football club will aspire to or want all their levels of teams playing the same brand of football. And we just weren't quite seeing that. So I think the time was was possibly right for, for Bold to move on. And without sounding too disrespectful, it, it was... It was maybe a case of we needed someone with some with some new ideas and someone with a, a bit more, maybe younger, it feels a bit harsh to say that, but maybe, maybe a little bit younger to come in with some new ideas and kind of along the same lines of, that Mikel was thinking that to try and find some symmetry there. Uh, so I think the right decision was, was made and it was clear the results on the pitch weren't, weren't good. Um, and I think whatever level of football you're playing, whether it be youth football, whether it be senior football, international football, if the results aren't good, then then you have to change something, don't you? And inevitably, <laughs> it was Steve. It was Steve yeah. who, got, who got the chop, despite uh, being yeah. a club legend. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I mean, it, it's almost kind of like the last bastion of the Arsene Wenger era as well, leaving because mm. obviously he was Wenger's right hand man for for so long and and integrated into the club for so long as well. So when Bold left, it was basically the only really semblance of the old times is is now the ownership, which is a worrying kind of situation <laughs> and a completely different conversation that is one to be had on a different podcast. Um, but whilst Arsenal didn't enjoy the the, the most like a best of seasons in the under. 23s they did stay up obviously and they will play in the pl2 next season um but there were obviously quite a lot of standouts um and specifically one of those players who we really kind of expected to leave uh this summer we didn't expect him to sign a new deal was following balogun he obviously mm-hmm. integrated into the european team for the europa league group stages scored on his debut played in a couple of league cup games he had a memorable kind of cameo against manchester city with a nice a kind of dribbling run at the Man City defence in which he created a chance for Nicolas Pepe. I remember that quite as a, as a standout. Um, but he has obviously signed that new deal with the intention in his mind that he's going to get more opportunities in the first team, which without European football will either come in either the cup games or as a substitute in these Premier League fixtures. So I suppose the question to Kraft is to say, do you think that he is now ready to make that step up to the first team? And do you think he's going to be given the ample amount of opportunities necessary for that next stage in his development? I do think the time's right for him. You know, I was so pleased he signed that contract. Uh, I think last season, one of the things that he did was have, have to adapt his game just a little bit. He was He found himself with with Moller in the team having to kind of play a little bit differently. Um, he went out onto the wing, onto the left uh, on a few occasions, and he, and he kind of had to run the channels a lot more and kind of had to work with his back to goal a lot more. Uh, he had to work in partnership a lot more, and it's improved his a lot. It's improved his link-up play, his hold-up play, the tiny, timing of his runs. Uh, so I think that's, that's going to help him coming into this season. And I think... The pathway is clearly there for him that, you know, it's been shown to him that if he works hard, you know, it will be noticed and the opportunities will be there. And I think he's one of those players that has a little bit of everything in his locker. Um, he's shown he can be any type of striker we want him to be. He's shown we can he can go out wide if we need him to be. And that's it's useful to be that versatile and it'll it'll stand him in good stead and in Mikel's thoughts, I'm sure. And I'm I'm hopeful those opportunities will be there you know it's, it's going to be a long season injuries are going to happen and you know one in injury to to arbor or lacazette and we're faced with with it with eddie maybe gabby and mm-hmm. and Balogun all, all fighting for that that one chance so i think they're going to be there if he can prove himself in training and he can work hard and if he can take his opportunities that might come in the cups then then who knows i think the opportunities will be there for him to seize Without coming across too negative, because I think something that happens a lot with the youngsters is everyone hypes them up very quickly. Everyone focuses on kind of the highlight reel and the YouTube compilation. Yep. Specifically with, but yeah, as, as I am as well, <laughs> um, but with kind of Balogun, what are the areas of his game that you feel that he really needs to kind of improve and, and develop on to make it into that first team on a regular basis? Well, I think just watching him the other day in terms of, uh, he can be a very technical player, but in, in high level of football, your first touch is absolutely everything. If you, if it's not spot on, then that that little millisecond you have 
to make an impact is gone. And and I think when he was, I can't remember what friendly it was, one of the Scottish teams where he, he got a chance, there was a couple of opportunities where his first touch just let him down. And I think it's making that transition from youth football to senior football. Uh, it, it's that understanding that you, you just don't have that time anymore. You t- your first touch has to be so perfect and set you on your way. And, you know, youth football, you often get that opportunity to take that, have that extra little second, mm-hmm. take that extra little touch. That's gone for him now, and he has to he has to kind of improve upon that and take those opportunities to have that beautiful first touch that sets himself on the way to make his next decision. So I think that, that'll be a key thing to hit, for him to realise and adapt to in, in senior football, which is sort of true for every young player that's coming into senior football because mm. that difference in level is is such that it there's always a period of of time it takes to, to kind of adapt. And I think he will do that, but that's something he'll need to work on. It's going to be exciting to see Balogun play. Uh, obviously, he has a, he's had a decent preseason in the few opportunities that he's had. He's, he's taken obviously one with a with a goal against. I think it was uh, Watford with a Millwall. I think it was actually with the with the, the round in the keeper. Yes, Great play did. from ironically Willian, a player that obviously a lot of Arsenal fans don't necessarily want to see us <laughs> keep. Um, but it was a good bit of interplay between them and Lacazette involved. I think as well. He so is, he's, he's so composed in those moments, isn't mm-hmm. he? When he goes clean through on goal, you just you, you put your house on him. In those moments, you yeah. know, you know he's going to round the keeper, or he's going to slot it in the in the bottom corner. He's just he's he's brilliant in that respect. And so, when he gets those few opportunities in kind of sub appearances, that's what's going to put him in good stead. Is that he's clinical and he's he's yeah. ruthless and calm yeah. and clinical, and will take those chances. So, fingers yeah. crossed for him for the season. The other big player coming out of the youth side at the moment, and obviously scored in a preseason friendly as well, with quite a strike uh, against Watford was was Miguel Aziz. Yeah. Uh, taking Gabriel Martinelli's number, which kind of gives an indication that maybe things are moving forwards with him, with being the number 35. Do you, and kind of when you compare him and Balogun, their chances of getting into the first team, the irony is that whilst both the midfield and the striking department, we've got kind of, there's a lot of numbers in those areas, mm. but it's the quality variation between the two, which is questionable. Like beyond... Xhaka, Partey, and now Sambi Lukonga. You've got El Nenny, who is, yeah, he's El Nenny. There's not really other way of, of putting it. And when you look at the talent of, of Miguel Aziz and the fact that there's two spots at least, possibly three if they ever change to a 4-3-3, mm-hmm. it looks like there's a simpler route for him into the first team midfield slots than there is actually for Balogun to get ahead of, say, Aubameyang, Lacazette, and Ketty at the moment, Martinelli, etc. So, how do you give Aziz quite a good chance of getting opportunities in the first team this season, initially in those cups, and then maybe even in the league? I kind of see it in reverse. So, I mean, whether this will happen or not, I don't, mm. I don't know. But I, and I tweeted this earlier on. For me, and I, a real ideal scenario for Miguel would be to loan him now to a Championship team, yeah. let him get fifteen to twenty games there, bring him back in January when. Um, Thomas and El Nenny go to the AFCON and then you know then we've got a player with experience in a decent league who's ready to step in because right now that's that's just the one thing that he's lacking he's just lacking that experience and I think you watch him on the pitch and he's he's so technically wonderful he's so graceful he sees the whole picture of the game He's he's got an incredible strike on him, and he I mean he scored a game for the under he's got a, yeah. a goal for the under twenty threes the other night, which was just out of this world. He just took it on, looked like he was going nowhere, and just from thirty yards, bang! And he's just got that in his locker, and and in situations where you I mean he's he's a right footed player, so the goal he scored for in pre season the other day with his left foot was yeah. just superb. Yeah. I mean, who does that on their weaker foot? And that's that's just who he is. Other than us at seven aside, of course. That aside, Obviously. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's just got that quality, and he's he's so technically brilliant. He's such an exciting player. He's just missing that experience. And I mm. I think if he was able to get fifteen to twenty games, and I'm not, you know, it, it might be a mid table championship team. It might be a lower lower table championship team. Just wherever he's guaranteed those games, let's let's let him go get that experience and come back to us even better and even even stronger and ready to go and physically he just looks like he's 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 come on in oh, a matter yeah. of months the yeah. legs yeah. insane <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, a, yeah. there's a lot of work going on going on there yeah um 
so yeah, he's he looks like he's going to grow into a wonderful, wonderful player, and mm. I, I think you know it's the pathway is there for him. You're right in terms of what you're saying. Slowly, you can see that pathway just sort of clearing for him, and you know, and then he'll be on his way. You know, mm. Jack is granite's here now, but but maybe he won't be in the future, and and you can just sort of you can see it clear and for him so there's there's a degree of patience we need and a, and a degree of not not rushing him but but he if if he was to go on loan and get those games and then come back to us in january he could be a really useful asset considering we will be a few midfielders down before we move on to kind of some of the the, the kids that are still going to be with the under 23s uh something that's popped into my mind that I, i'm really curious to get your thoughts on we've seen obviously bakaya saka flourish since getting that first team slot but a player that went up from the youth team with a lot of promise and potential that hasn't quite cut it is Reese Nelson. Mm. Uh, and specifically, like we don't know what his future is like. We, as far as I'm aware from the information I had, is that he turned down the opportunity to go on loan at the start of this year in the January Reece window yeah. to try and fight for his place. <laughs> what I want to kind of angle the question is, is kind of with a player like with that, with so much promise, and why do you think that's necessarily happened with him? And is there the same kind of concern that that could happen with a Balogun, with a uh, an Aziz, with a Kido Taylor Hart coming through? Is there the same risks associated? Always, always. Nothing's guaranteed, mm. and you it, sometimes you never know which way it's gonna go. If you look, if you think back to the start of last season, uh, Emil Smith Rowe and Reese Nelson were in very similar positions and, and both started some games in the Europa League um you know Emil had his his injury worries previously and and at the start of the season and I think Arsenal were really careful in the way they sort of nurtured him in that sense and and it enabled him to build some fitness up in training and, and in the Europa League games and then in he came to the senior team and make mm. made a great impact and if you look at Reese, he had sort of started off on a similar tra trajectory of playing in some of those Europa League games, but then the injuries come and just interrupted that. It, he had a few good performances, but it, it seemed like every time he took a step forward, he, an injury would happen and he would take mm. two steps back. So there's a lot of unluckiness there that he just, he didn't quite get those breaks in, in maybe the same way Emil did, or the Smith as we should call them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've had some people complain about that, Nick, but I, really? I love that. Really? I really like it. I, I, I like the Smith, yeah. 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 Um, so let's let's talk about some of the guys that are probably going to be with the under-23s next season have just signed mm -hmm. some new deals. Initially, Kido Taylor-Hart announced today. Really good news on that. There was a bit of a touch and go towards the end of the season, whether he was going to sign or not. And Arthur Oconquo as well, the goalkeeper that's got a few minutes in pre-season. As mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't the best audition, especially for those Arsenal fans that do take those few minutes as gospel. Um, but talk to me about those two kind of players and where you expect to kind of see their futures. Uh, well, Arthur, I think these things happen for young people sometimes, for young players sometimes. And, and I think what people maybe don't quite understand is, is adversity can be as important as success. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that moment was probably a really good moment for him because he'll know now when back passes come to him like that, he needs to have the technical, technical security um, that is pinpoint accuracy. And it's safe as houses, and he, he needs to deal with it. it in, other, in other senses, in, in other times, he might get away with that, but he'll know now. And it's that adversity that allows him to kind of move on and develop from those situations. And it's that old kind of catchphrase you, you learn more from losing than you do from winning sometimes. And I think yeah. that might be the case with Arsenal in this one. So I, was, I kind of, you know, it's not great to see, and I'm sure he was gutted, but it, it's kind of maybe a blessing in disguise as well. Um, so hopefully he can kick on now. I don't know how many appearances he'll he'll get for the senior team and whether he'll be considered for the cup teams. But it, it's great that he signed his new deal and it's great that he'll be around and hopefully we can we can see him develop more. And he's only young. Keepers, you know, take much many years to develop. If we look at Emmy Martinez at, at that age, he was still very raw and making mistakes. And he's a great keeper now. So mm. you know, there's every hope that Arthur can can do the same. Um, if we look at Kido, I'm over the moon for him signing that contract because he's a player of such great potential. I remember when he was a schoolboy, uh, a lot of people uh, who know more than me 
uh, were telling me, you know, this is this is the kid, this is the guy. He he has everything, and he he yeah. could potentially be the best player in our academy, and, and many believe he is. Um, and then it kind of didn't immediately happen for him when he when he became a scholar and got into the under 18s. Um, there was, you know, I think he, he was quite slight in his frame, and he he would you know get get kind of shrugged off the ball a little bit sometimes and he was struggling to find his feet a little bit he had some good performances but uh he was struggling a little bit and uh he got um quite a bad injury which set him back a little bit and we just didn't we didn't see that potential and uh, but he worked hard and he, he he came back that season and then the following season he looked like he'd grown a foot and he looked like he'd, he'd filled out and no longer was he someone that was going to get shoved off the ball. He was battling for everything and and putting in some some great performances. Um, I'm not sure how many goals he got for the under twenty threes, maybe four or five. But yeah, um, he he's just yeah, brilliant so. on that left wing, cutting mm. inside. Um, he he as soon as he gets into the box, he can just unleash that shot um, in either corner, and it's it he, he's lethal and. Uh, he can also go the other way, and he's got such great step overs and tri- trickery. He can he can go the other way and hit the byline and put that cross in with his left foot. He he's got it all, and there's many people believe because he's quite quite a tall lad that he he can develop into a striker possibly, and it's something to keep an eye on. But he he's certainly someone with an eye for goal who's who's really really talented. So uh, hopefully he gets we get to see a lot more of him in the under twenty threes and. And maybe they'll even consider him for a loan. I don't know. And um, you know, it would be nice to uh, see him in the. Uh, I never know what the League Cup's called these days. I, I want yeah, to call it the Carling Cup, but it hasn't been that. Carabao. <laughs> well, that's the one. Yeah, that's yeah. The one. Oh, some some sports drink or bank or something. <laughs> yeah, these days it's. Uh, hopefully, he does get a chance. I'd love to see that. It, de- yeah. it depends on obviously we get drawn because I think last year our first two rounds were Leicester and then Liverpool, and then we got knocked out by Manchester City. So it's yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's sometimes you just don't get the luck of the draw with yeah, uh, with, yeah. with that competition. So it will depend on who we get. It's, um, I think it's sandwiched in between some big games for us, isn't it, yeah. as well? So it might be a good opportunity for us to rest a few players. So it might work yeah. in, in that favour, fingers crossed. Without Europe as well, like for me anyway, like I actually want to see us take a run at the League Cup and the FA Cup because we mm. don't have Europe. And I think some people maybe are underplaying the importance of, of Cups. And I, we talk about top four, and I'd love us to get top four. But in... 30, 40, 50 years time when I'm barely able to see football anymore. It's it's not going to be the race for the top four that I remember. It's going to be the trophies that we win. So I always want to see us push yeah. for those, those trophies. Yeah, I, I always kind of uh, really never understood those people who turned their noses up at the FA Cup wins. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll remember those those FA Cup wins. But I, I think it was a year ago the other day, wasn't it? Yesterday or something oh, it like so that. so much longer than that. It's just it, it, crazy. It's close, yeah. isn't it? just, just that Aubameyang just turning i think was it kurt zuma and just yeah, leaving the dead and then and then that's it, it was wonderful we'll remember even that even the semi-final with the the diving lunge to get the flick onto the post around Carl yeah. walker and in on there it's just yeah. yeah those moments i wish he could finish like that now because <laughs> it's only been a year and he's lost his finishing ability hopefully yeah. it comes back very soon uh yeah. there is you say there that some people saying that keto taylor hart um is, was going to be kind of the next big thing maybe he will be still and, and there's a lot but Interesting. There was an interview in goal um, with uh, Brian Stapleton, who was the the scout that found uh, Charlie Patino when he was at Luton Town. He said, "Of all the years I've been scouting, he's the best kid I've ever seen," which is yeah. quite a, a statement. Is he right? <laughs> it could be. You know, it, he he has he has a lot of room to grow. Um, he's still quite raw, um, but you can just see. I think the thing with Charlie is for. For as long as anyone can remember, he's been playing up. He's been playing above his age group um, because he's always just been so technically good on the ball that he, he's been able to to translate into all their age groups. And um, it, even even last season, he was he was into the under twenty three teams, and you could tell straight away he he belonged there. And uh, he, I think he's going to have a really good season this season. He, he's just got. It, and it reminds me a lot of Jack Wilshire, where he just will receive the ball. Maybe he's got his back to to the player. Maybe he's he's facing them, but he's just got that sort of dynamite acceleration from from standing where he can just go 
very quickly. You know, and I'm not saying he's the quickest player in the sprint, but from from standing to to then moving past the player, he, he just zooms past them, and it, it's it's really impressive to watch. Um, and he he can pick a pass with that left foot from from anywhere. And like Aziz, he he has an excellent shot from distance. He wants to score goals. Mm. Uh, it'll be really interesting, like Aziz as well. Really interesting to see what type of midfielders they develop into. Whether he he kind of grows into that deep line playmaker role um, in the mold of Greg Jacker, or whether he kind of goes into more of a box to box. And and kind of you know in the in the mold of Aaron Ramsey or something like that, they've got it in their locker to both of them to develop into either of those roles, and it'll be and maybe it'll be a hybrid where they where they do both, or maybe it'll just be one or the other. So it'll be really interesting to see how that how that pans out. But yeah. Charles, yeah, another one who's just fantastic. I can't wait to see more of him. I've I've thought I've not been able to catch too many of the, the youth games and the ones I have when he did play obviously it's, it's typical to see all of them because they're not all streamed and stuff like that and so you end up just seeing like why scout clips and they're right. only sometimes because they're not always put up on the website um but yeah he's, he's certainly one that, that fans need to be interested in and, and certainly one to watch in, in the future the kind of last bit of the show before we wrap up is kind of around the the, the transfers ins and outs uh, we'll start with the ins and there's kind of one big major in that we do need to talk about and that's mika Bira from from fulham what kind of make of that sign? He was the top scorer, I think, in, in the league at the under 18s, 21 goals, 21 games, 13 assists as well. It's, it's a crazy return. Obviously, it is the under 18s. We should stress that point. But do you think, I don't know how much you've seen of him, but what do you make of that signing? And what do you think it means as kind of a statement in that department for Arsenal moving forward? Yeah, I think it was certainly an area we needed to strengthen. We knew we knew Balogun was going to be promoted. We knew uh, Therese John Jules was likely to go on loan again. Yeah. We knew it was uh, Muller was going on loan, so we knew it was an area we needed someone in, um, and they've they've identified a player with with some excellent statistics. I've not seen lots of him, but mm. um, I can recall him scoring against us last season, I believe. And uh, he, his excellent his record is just excellent. And from I've only seen clips of him really, but he he looks a really clever player who's able to drop into little pockets of space, make excellent runs, and he's always in the right place at the right time um, to finish. And and those things uh, I hate the phrase tap in merchant because there's, <laughs> there's nothing more stupid than that. Yeah, um, people who are described as tap in merchants are people who have excellent timing of runs who are able to instinctively know where to be at the right time. And that, mm. that's a really hard thing to do. If it was easy, every striker would be a tap-in merchant. Yeah. Um, but he, he seems to be that that player who can do that. He seems quite quite good at running the channels and linking play. He got, as you say, quite a lot of assists. So I look forward to seeing him link up with, with some of our players and uh, like Amari Hutchinson and Kido taylor Ha. I, I can see that being quite a exciting front three of, of Taylor Hart, Hutchinson and Mika. So we'll, mm. we'll to see how that goes. Some of the outs, of course, that we have sent some players on loan. Uh, Harry Clark today was announced to have gone to, to Ross County. He obviously played in preseason. Played, I thought he was actually, ironically, one of the standout players mm. on the pitch against yeah. uh, the Burnian in, in the uh, in the Scottish tour. With with how kind of congested the centre back is, and we can kind of combine Daniel Ballard into this a bit as well. Mm-hmm. We've we've obviously signed Ben White for fifty million pounds. Saliba, we don't know what's going on with with the Saliba. Um, you've got, <laughs> yes, you've got holding on an hour long term contract too. We've got Gabriel is still young. Pablo Marie signed a new contract. Obviously, mm-hmm. was signed fully last summer as well. So it's very congested in there. Do you see Clark or Ballard or anyone? I mean, Rekic, of course, was in that in that group as well in the under twenty three. Any of these guys? having the chance to break into that first team i think it's always possible and you know that clark and ballard are are two very good players ballard especially is a player i really i really like and i I think arsenal really like a lot and i think uh, i'm really eager to see how he does in the championship i think he had a a great season with blackpool and, and blackpool fans absolutely adored him um i think they'd like him to have a lot more of the ball and his his passing accuracy be a bit higher um and i think with millwall he'll, he'll have the chance to do that a little bit more not that mm. i'm i'm disrespecting the way blackpool play but i, I think it'll be yeah. if we want to develop him he needs to have more of the ball um 
And I think Harry Clark is it, it, very versatile. He can step into midfield, he can go to right back, and that that will always serve him well. And you just never know what what will happen. What things can seem very unlikely, and then you know, with if you think back to many seasons we've had where we've had injury crisis after injury crisis, and half the first team on the on the treatment table, you never know where these opportunities might present themselves. You know, it's it's always possible. So, if if Ballard or Clark would be to called up, I'd be you know I'd be quietly confident that well not quietly I'd be loudly confident that I think they would be quite surprising in what they were able to produce. Good to hear. Last thing then, um, striking department. Tyrese John George you mentioned has gone to Blackpool. We've got a good relationship with them now, seeing Ballard go off there as well. Uh, and and of course Nikolai Moller, really interesting player that we brought in from Malmo. Um, has gone to Victoria Köln in Germany in the third tier of German football. What do you make of those two guys? And, and do you see them with the potential to emulate a, a Balogun style promotion to the first team? Yeah, um, possible. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really interested to see how they both get on on loan. I, I think Moller was a lot of people were very uh, kind of infused by his profile of being really tall, mm. uh, powerful, you know, and able to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, for me, it doesn't quite. That's not what I'd, I'd kind of see him do well. Um, what I saw him do well was work really well with his back to goal, and link up really well, and technically he looks quite good. Um, what I wanted to see more of him was to be more aggressive in the box and actually uses his his height and uses his power to to get goals. I don't. I don't I'm not sure if he scored any headed goals in the box. You would expect mm. that of him. Uh, so I'd like him to develop that aggression a little bit more and hopefully it, it's a great advantage to have that profile so if he can develop that then he's gonna he's gonna play himself into contention and and Tyrese for me is is a quality player who's just a really clever player um and I think he'll do well in the championship and I think it's it was natural for him to step up there and I think he can score a lot of goals he's been very unlucky with with injuries and I hope I hope that's something he can put behind him um he was doing really well for Doncaster before and after his injury. He he was, yeah. and they liked him a lot. Um, and it seems like his career has been very stop start. That he's 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 had times of progress, and then those injuries creep up. So I'm I'm really hoping he can he can have a full season and get thirty plus games in the championship for Blackpool. And I'm sure if he does that, he'll be in double figures with goals. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they get on. And of course, uh, Tyrese John Jules, Daniel Ballard, uh, William Saliba, all going to be covered in our monthly tactical breakdown um, reports uh, from we've got the Marseille View covering Saliba, we've got the Seasiders podcast covering Tyrese John Jules, and we've got uh, Mike McGrath covering um, uh, Daniel Ballard at Mill. So I'm really looking forward to seeing all of those initial breakdowns. But Kev, to round off the show, I mean, we've, we've got a great partnership with yourself coming up this season. You're going to be providing us with monthly updates on, on how the season's going. And to put you on the spot to round things off, of all the players we've spoken of, and you're not allowed to name any of them, which player that we've not mentioned is going to be the one that, you know, makes themselves known to the Arsenal fan base from that under-23 squad? Brooke, Martin, Coffey. Remember the name. There you, you, asked for it, you wanted it. There it is. There you go. No explanation needed. Keep an eye out for it, and maybe we'll hear his name crop up in a few of your breakdowns in the coming season. Kevin, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Really appreciate your time this evening. Let people know where they can find you. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Scouting Indoors, Next Gen Arsenal. Um, thanks for having me on, Tom. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and thanks for looking after me, it's, it, as it's my first time doing one of these oh, things. It's not as scary, is it? It's fine. It's, yeah, it's, it's fine. fine. It was just oh. a nice chat, wasn't it, in the end? It was, <laughs> yeah. In, in, I mean, when we get to the live shows during the season and we get some of the, the user questions, that's when it might step up a little bit more. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but it's been great to have a chat and learn a lot about what's been going on in the under-23s this season. And, of course, we look forward to hearing a lot more about it during the season as well. Chatbox, if you have indeed enjoy, enjoyed the show, apologies if we weren't able to get to any of your questions today. We will certainly do that in future, and I'm certainly going 
going to try and get a Q&A style thing for some of the monthly shows to throw some questions at Kev. Um, but make sure you do drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss a show. You can help support the channel by becoming a member as well. And of course, you can vote for us in the Football Content Awards that we're trying to go for. Information is in the description to today's video. A massive thank you again to Kev for joining us. As you said, you can find him at Scouting Indoors. You can find us at the Guna Talk TV or myself at Tom Canton Media. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for the Transfer Update show. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, up the Arsenal.